Lord, we ask you to use your servant this morning, mightily. In Jesus' name, you may be seated this morning. I want to encourage you to just high five somebody next to you. Tell them it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Tell them it's good to see you. But it's good to see everybody this morning. Amen. All my ministers in the house. Amen. All my board members, my board leaders. I want to say thank you. They are strong. They support myself and Pastor D. 100. And because of this, we are standing today. Amen. My arm bearer, thank you so much to Minister Lucille. She has been with me through thick and thin. We keep each other company, God. Amen. And I want to thank God most of all for my husband, my family. where God brought me from. God had to remind me, don't go back to Egypt. So I was planning to take a rest on Monday morning, because Sunday we had such an awesome time in church. And as I opened the scripture for my devotion, the Holy Spirit said to me, right. I didn't plan to get a sermon so quick. But when God is flowing, you got to tap him in the air. That's how we'll get it again. So this sermon was written one day in the morning. And during the week, God had me to reflect on my Egypt I came from. And he said, Egypt is always going to be there. In all forms and fashion. But you got to know how to leave Egypt alone. This morning, I don't know who you are in this space, but God has a word for you today. God wants to bless you, but He doesn't need Egypt to bless you. Today, as we go into the Word, we must understand God doesn't need my past to make me a blessing. Sometimes we believe that God needs us messed up to make us blessings. He said, blessed are the defiled, the undefiled, for the inheritance of God is theirs. We don't have to have a messed up past for God to bless us. And we don't have to go get a messed up past for God to bless us. God can bless us right where we are. I've learned while studying this word that God doesn't need my sin to cause me to live. He doesn't need me to be in sin for me to feel his man. God doesn't need a place of slavery to bless me when he can do it all by himself. God doesn't require us to return to the accursed things, to deliver us, to bless us. He said, I want to bless you right where you are. I also want you to get this before I preach. God doesn't need broken things to accept us. You don't have to get broken for God to accept you. God will take you just as you can. Whole pieces anyhow. He will still accept you. God doesn't need dead things to bless living men. Exodus. 
But we are talking about the journey mind. They are out of Egypt. And they are making up their mind to go back to Egypt. After the promised land. After the joy in the river. After Jericho Falls. After everything is done. Their plan is to go back to Egypt. You might be sitting here this morning and say, who me, pastor?
Sister Rosa, I'm going to have to use you for my amen today. People who don't like to fight always want to go back to Egypt. People who don't want to depend on God always have to go back to Egypt. People who don't want to trust God always have to go back to Egypt. People who don't want to trust God for their children will have to go back to Egypt. People who don't want to trust God to be their help will go back to Egypt. People who don't want to see God bigger than their problem will always go back to Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt is bondage. Egypt is everything that kept you back from knowing God. Everything that kept you back from walking strict with God. Everything that kept you back from living righteously. Everything that kept you under a curse. Everything that had you messed up, tied up, bumped up, lost up. That's Egypt. Everything that had you not praising God the way you should. Everything that had you coming to church and it happens your hands. Everything that had you doubting God. Everything that had you living in fear. That's Egypt.
she was in the home. It tells you the depth of how much believers really don't trust God. You might be sitting here praying this morning saying, Pastor, I trust God. We only know your trust till you reach in a situation and God sees no trust. The first person you call tells where you trust.
Judah was running from Jerusalem because there was famine and there was war around. Different, different kings were coming and they were rooting and, and looting and taking up stuff. So they were running from war. They were running from famine. But God said, if Judah runs, who will speak to them? Who will be a eternal blessing? Who will be the light? Who will be the salt if you run? Treat it. 